It is a national shame, Deputy Speaker, because in Australia we value home ownership very deeply. It is a deep part of our nation's story. For a country that was built largely on a classless system, that classless system has been built on the notion of home ownership. The founders of our modern country came over here and, particularly from the 20th century onwards, recognised that the way to have a different system to the class system that existed in the United Kingdom was for most Australians to be able to own their own home. A home provides stability for families, it provides social cohesion, it builds stronger communities and it provides security in retirement. Member for Hughes. Thank you, Deputy Speaker. I thank the honourable member for Deakin for bringing this matter of public importance to this place today, and that is the government's failed policies which are creating a housing crisis for Australians. Since this government has been elected, the housing affordability in this country is now beyond a crisis. And this is because of many of the policies that this government has introduced. It's a national shame, Deputy Speaker, because in Australia we value home ownership very deeply. It is a deep part of our nation's story. For a country that was built largely on a classless system, that classless system has been built on the notion of home ownership. The founders of our modern country came over here and, particularly from the 20th century onwards, recognised that the way to have a different system to the class system that existed in the United Kingdom was for most Australians to be able to own their own home. A home provides stability for families, it provides social cohesion, it builds stronger communities and it provides security in retirement. And at the moment, Deputy Speaker, younger Australians particularly are failing have been failed by this, by this government, and especially, for example, in my home state of New South Wales. We are denying the millennials and also Generation Z the opportunity that those who went before them had. For example, in Sydney about 40 years ago, the, average, the median house price was five times the average salary. Today the ratio is closer to 12. So even if these younger people do all that we've asked of them, finish school, get an education, get a job, it's still going to take them on average about 12 years to save for a deposit. So whether this be home ownership or rents, housing is now almost completely unaffordable in this, in this country. And the problem is largely due to supply. <laughs> we have failed to build the number of houses needed over the past, particularly over the past 20 years. And while this government has spoken about addressing supply, it has said it will deliver 1.2 million new homes over five years. Deputy Speaker, that's the promise from this government. That's 240,000 new homes each and every year. That came out of an announcement from National Cabinet towards the end of last year. And a couple of weeks later, Labor New South Wales Premier Chris Minns, the Premier of the most populous state in the country, said, oh, New South Wales now can't meet its targets. If New South Wales can't meet its targets, the federal government cannot meet its targets. But I will say this about Premier Minns, is at least he was honest about it. And the main policy that the government has failed on, for example, is the economic policy. Its failure to grasp inflation, its failure to get inflation under control has led to 12 interest rate rises in a row. That means that the average mortgage of $750,000, that family is now needing to find another $24,000 each year to be able to adjust to pay their mortgage. This has then, of course, also led to an increase where property developers to cover their own um, property owners to cover their own mortgages on investment properties have necessarily had to increase rents as well. And also the shortage of rental properties um, has meant now that our national median rents have increased by 26 per cent under this government's watch. We've also seen 
a government that has failed to address some of the major issues in the building and construction industry, which is now on its knees. We have record construction insolvencies. The ABS has highlighted the weakest quarter of construction in more than a decade. We need an extra 90,000 construction workers in the next three months. This is according to Build Skills Australia, just for the government to meet its target of 1.2 million new homes. So this is not going to happen. The government also. I've just heard the minister here saying that she has no that it doesn't that state and local government are completely separate entities. The minister has the ability to be able to incentivise state and local governments to be able to provide better housing choice, to look at very innovative projects. For example, I've got tiny, tiny solar homes in my electorate. I'd invite the minister to come and have a look at them. We've got companies doing amazing things in airspace development, building homes in airspace on existing development. These are the sorts of things the Labor government the should be looking at to address housing in this. Expired.